Hello, and welcome back to the Masonic Roundtable, a weekly program where Masons from around the world get together to talk about Masonic news and opinions in a friendly and social manner. As a reminder, the thoughts and opinions expressed here are solely the opinions of the participants and do not represent any Grand Lodge statements or positions. Make sure you keep your conversations open for the public and on the level. To interact with us, as always, send questions and comments to our Facebook page or our YouTube page. Love chatting with you all live. And some of you may even see your comments show up on the air. Uh, you know me. My name is John Ruark. I'm a past master of the Patriot Lodge, number 1957, in Fairfax, Virginia. Next up for his introduction today, that'll be Joe Martinez. Hey, Joe. Hello. Hello. Joe Martinez. I'm in a different part of my office. So I know I'll confuse Oh, yeah. You. I'm, I'm yeah. scared. Yeah, Joe Martinez, uh, current Worshipful Master of Manassas Lodge number 182, member of a bajillion other things, and uh, my feet still hurt from the uh, cornerstone ceremony at the GW Memorial, but great to be here. It's a lot of walking. A lot of walking. Next up for his introduction, Robert Johnson. Hey, Robert. Howdy, howdy. Robert hey. Johnson. <laughs> uh Past Master Waukegan, 78, current sitting secretary at Space Novum Lodge, 1183, and the host of the Wentz Game U podcast. Great to be with you on this awesome new platform. Love Sweet. it. And finally, we have Jason Richards. How's it going, Jason? Good. How are Good. you guys? Great. Awesome. Oh, who are you? I am Jason Richards, as you couldn't tell by my not quite lower third. I'm a past master of Vacation Lodge number 16 in Clifton, Virginia, member of the Colonial Lodge number 1821 in Washington, D.C., and Lafayette Lodge number 79 in Ohio. Nice. Awesome. Well, as usual, I want to thank you everyone for joining us and also want to give a special shout out to our patrons who support the show. So um, you guys rock. If you want to help contribute to, and see some backstage stuff, Head over to patreon.com slash the Masonic Realm table. And that helps the show keep going and growing for many years to come. So thank you. You guys rock. Growing and not just showing. Yes. Right. <laughs> well, anyway, oh. let's see. Uh, tarot card of the week. Who's got, who's got a deck at, at hand? It's, it's uh, RJ. RJ looks like he's reaching. Oh, all do? right. Right, paper scissors you go ahead robert robert's overdue yeah, yeah. all right well uh this is the every oh the real talk tarot this is a pretty cool one um all the stuff the old white book for this guy kind of a cool cool one it's very contemporary very um Mm, practical. So the newer, cards. newer model. We'll just yeah. just do it. Do it. Sounds like oh, dang. How about the magician? Ooh, nice. Oh. The magician. Cool beans. That's a good one. Yeah, it is. So what does that? What does that mean to you guys? We're gonna manifest some stuff tonight. <laughs> Probably yeah. not the show to do that, but okay. <laughs> yeah. Not. You want actual action taken. Well, it's new beginnings and we got a new podcasting platform. So mm -hmm. super awesome. Mm -hmm. So I think we, we we finished the card. We're good. On to next week. Easy yeah. peasy. <laughs> We're gonna manifest a bunch of uh, letters of suspension after <laughs> after this episode <laughs> it really it, it's it talks about you know manifestation uh, being your own boss kind of thing um making it happen yep yeah i mean kill it on the side hustle so mm -hmm. that's what i hope everybody's gonna do take your yeah. side hustle and kill it. go crush it do it sweet all oh, right no. so let's see tonight's topic is on the conference of the grand masters of north america and why is that relevant for this week why why are we talking about that this week as upon all weeks so that we could be covering this topic because you told us to and it, it just and happened. it just happened <laughs> just happened that's the right answer because john Hard. said so right um yeah this was a busy month you know we, we did talk about all the events that were going on at the George Washington National Masonic Memorial and that it 
coincided with the the, the local to most of us um, conference of grandmasters in North America, the conference of grand secretaries, like there was all the masonry you could shove into February. And so we've not talked about what is the, the purpose of this grandmasters of North America and what do they do? How does it operate? What's the, so what behind that? Um, and I will probably hand it over to Joe to kind of go into a little bit more detail in the origins, the history, the beginnings, and the the kind of the structure. Why do they do this in the first place? Because I know what a grandmaster is. Why do we have a conference of grandmasters, Joe? Do you want the the scripted answer? <laughs> I want the Joe answer. I want the Joe answer. <laughs> so now let's preface everything by saying not and, and chime in if yeah. you disagree. Nobody here has actually attended. Mm-hmm. The Conference of Grandmasters of North America. Am I right? Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Um, We are simply on the sidelines downing popcorn. That's right. Um, But we've never attended. We've never gone to a presentation because you can you 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 can have extra people show up. Like a lot of our a lot of our dear dear friends and friends of the show actually attended, gave presentations, that kind of thing. So, um, but full disclosure, um, we're looking at this from an outsider's perspective. so yeah, so the Conference of Grandmasters of North America. So it is a gathering, an annual gathering of grandmasters and their representatives and people that they would like to come with them. It, it's not just the grandmaster. Um, a lot of times it's the deputy grandmaster or the second in command, um, as well as a, a delegation um, from all the recognized jurisdictions in North America. So that's not just the United States. It includes Canada. And it includes Mexico as well. So they get attendees from all 50 states, from the different and and varied Grand Lodges that are in Mexico, as well as the Grand Lodges that are in the provinces in Canada. And they get together. And uh, it usually roves around to a different jurisdiction. Uh, This year, it happened to uh, be hosted by the Grand Lodge of Virginia. And it just happened to coincide with the um, celebration of the hundredth anniversary of the laying of the cornerstone of the George Washington Masonic National Memorial. So they had the conference there pretty much. Um, they had it a couple blocks away in Crystal City, um, but they did have a lot of events and galas and um, the reading of minutes and all those things. Those happen in the memorial. So um, you know, even if you're a grandmaster, you cannot escape the reading of the minutes. And now for the reading of the minutes. <laughs> The Grand Minutes. It the Grand like Minutes. Woo! Monty Python sketch. <laughs> yes. We need that cloud guy from Monty Python, the one that comes in and does the things. Yes. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. So, so I mean, so this goes way back because, um, you know, we've, we th- think, have we talked about, well, we talked about the Masonic Services Association of North America uh, as an organization that has been around since uh, early 1920s. You talked about them quite a bit because they uh, collected Masonic statistics about, you know, demographics and the like. And um, and they were really kind of pulled together by this this uh, set of grandmasters who get together. And so it's just really interesting because if you're unfamiliar with with kind of the way Freemasonry structured, especially in the United States, there is Benevolent no grand... dictatorship. Well, and there's no grand lodge of the united states there's no grand master there could have been there could have been ah but so you like freedom so that's interesting freedoms so we have a very highly federated approach to um amity between states slash jurisdictions we have um you know where each each jurisdiction is sovereign so how how do we share information right before the internet Back in the 1920s, how did grand jurisdictions actually get together and kind of compare notes? Not I think really that's, well. Yeah, well, that's even why this was born, right? I mean, uh, according to the uh, George Washington National Masonic Memorial, right? They said the first conference of grand masters in Philadelphia in 1909. Uh, look at your minute books uh, for your grand lodge. Uh, a lot of people might think that that's like some really dry reading and there is some pretty dry stuff in there, but if you're looking for like esoteric talks and things, check out what your orator had to say. It's pretty astounding. Actually. Um, I've yet to find an oration that was terrible. Um, well, some of them are, but anyway, so 
this whole Very thing. There's all these um, committees that they would assign to go to different jurisdictions. Like committee men would have to go to another Grand Lodge, their sessions, and take notes. And oftentimes you will find those committee notes within your jurisdiction's uh, uh, their grand sessions. Like, what? hey, I'm coming back to report what happened at the Virginia and they'll just talk all kinds of crap about some other foreign jurisdiction. I can't believe they do this and blah, 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 blah. And every jurisdiction did this. And the Conference of the Grand Masters really was probably the, the first time that they could all really get together, get in the same room, not rely on hearsay or their goofball committees who really just reported the gossip. I think we, we did have an interesting question in the chat that i wanted to bring to the forefront um joe are are there green beans this is this is important yeah um i did not i did not get the menus to the different dinners but let me say this if i were a betting man if i were a betting man and they were at a hotel and they were eating hotel food yes damn right there was green beans (laughs) it's a conspiracy (laughs) thousand percent but yeah no you bring up um you bring up an excellent point where um, I went through a few years of nice. Thank you, brother Scott. Um, definitely unfriending you on <laughs> Facebook. Um, so yeah, this is fun. This just totally throws me off my game. when we <laughs> Because I usually don't see them until after the show. And, uh, and then I get mad all by myself, but this is great. So um, I went through the last uh, four or five years of proceedings uh, to find out what they actually did talk about. Um, and for those that have never been to one, or if you're like myself, who will never go to one, um, they actually had the 2021 Conference of Grandmasters via Zoom, and they posted it on YouTube. So um, their actual general session, you can watch the whole thing and um, see 100 plus Grandmasters um, doing their thing. Um, so, but uh, going back to RJ's point, um, there's some big, committees, I guess you could call them, that that they talk about in the grand sessions. And the one is the one that John mentioned, the Masonic Services Association. They do a report basically on the state of the craft, um, how many fabulous short talk bulletins they've published, how many are read in Lodge. Um, By how much the fraternity is shrinking? Well, yes, the membership numbers, and which they took a hiatus for a couple of years on posting those numbers, but they've started doing it again. Um, Oh, yeah. So that's the MSANA. Um, and they are, they cover North America as well. It's not just USA. So um, then the next one is the National Masonic Foundation for Children. So a lot of charitable donations and activities around uh, Masonic youth, which we love Masonic youths. I have two of them. They're pretty cool. Um, then there is always a presentation by someone from the GW Masonic National Memorial, you know, telling them how the memorial is doing, how much money they have, how much money they need. Um, things like that and how each grand lodge, uh, takes care of them. And then, and I think John mentioned it as well at the same time as the conference of grand masters is the guys who really run things, the conference of grand secretaries. So the grand secretaries get together and they do grand secretary things. So if you're like me, that has a phenomenal secretary that actually runs everything and just makes me look pretty. Um, that's where the real meat and potatoes happens. Um, so they get their own mini conference. So they send delegations from all their jurisdictions. Um, and then the last big one, uh, that somebody mentioned, I think it was brother Shelby in the chat. Um, they talk about the, uh, they have a meeting of the commission, uh, for recognition, uh, information for recognition. So that is, um, jurisdictions that seek recognition from one body or another, and they get together. Yep. There you go. Um, and discuss the pros and cons of recognition, their legitimacy of origin, all that good stuff. So yeah, that's the, and again, um, they have dinners and they have banquets and they have, you know, fun events. Um, I, I did see the, the schedule for this one here. There was a lot of traveling around, um, Alexandria. So they went to Mount Vernon, um, they went to the Memorial, you know, they did other such things and took tours and stuff. So, um, yeah, fun little time if you're a grandmaster or on his delegation. Yeah. But what would you say you do here exactly? <laughs> yes. That's the real, that's the real question. Well, see, you know, engineers are not good. 
with dealing with customers. So I take the needs the from the customers and I give them to the engineers. I take the requirements from the customers <laughs> and I give them to the engineers. Well, do you physically? No, my grand secretaries do. But so, I'm a okay. people person. Listen, listen. <laughs> When you are a corporation in the United States, you got your top dogs, you got your people going out doing the thing and, you know, your local lodges or maybe your sales reps. And then you got all these people inside the organization that have internal customers, internal customers. Really, I, that's how I look at the Conference of Grandmasters. It's like they get together and they get all their cool reports from all of their internal uh, analysis people, and then they collectively figure out how those people are wrong and how best not to listen to anything they said, and then to just go on with what they want to do anyway. Well, <laughs> I, did catch, I did catch a hint of humor in that, but yeah, uh, I, I mean, I, but I mean, let's be honest, right? The last few years, there have been some really great presentations that I have heard about from the Conference of Grand Masters. Uh, for instance, Mike Stoops, I think, did a presentation. Um, I know the Grand Secretaries this year, Brother uh, Robert Marshall did a presentation. And in a lot of these presentations, these are uh, prolific minds and brothers who use their real world, right? Not just made up Masonic title world, but real world expertise to give a report on something, to essentially bring to the forefront real issues, real solutions, or at least call attention to something with possible outcomes and possible solutions. And more often than not, our Grand Lodges are very insular, which is why I think the Conference of Grand Masters is very necessary. At least gets them out of their bubble, right? Yeah, because, well, you know, they just don't know what's going on, really. Provincial but, masonry. But, but. You, you say it's necessary, and I'm sure it's lovely. Like I said, I will never attend, so I don't have to worry about it. But, you know, you, you started off your, your point by saying, you know, each jurisdiction is its own thing, and they get together, and that's nice. But, again, at the end of the day, each jurisdiction is its own thing, and it's sovereign to itself. It doesn't report to anybody. It does whatever it wants, and it doesn't need to take any of the things that, that come out of this, right? Like, I was looking at some of the agenda items, and there were some really interesting topics on there. Like I, I and I know for a fact we know this. Um, a good friend of the show, uh, most worshipful brother Sean Bradshaw, he gave his presentation on the you know the declining numbers uh, a couple of years ago. I yeah. think it's to the conference of grand secretary, grand secretaries. And um, but again, the, ver the very same one he gave on TMR too. That's, so. that's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, which of these grand jurisdictions took that info or the info that um, most worshipful Stoops gave and actually ran back to their jurisdictions with it? Um, zero, yeah. zero. I mean, it's, you know what I mean? And that's, that's what I mean. If, if there's awesome stuff, I was reading, uh, 2022's, uh, the proceedings and, and Robert's right. They gave this amazing, they had a keynote speaker. It was a beautiful address. It was really lovely. Um, and then they had a, like, they had like three speakers at the main session, you know, give a program on different things, but how many of those things actually went back out to the jurisdictions? So it's great that they all got together, but do they disseminate that information? Probably not, right? Yeah, that's that's the that's the rub there, right? I mean, so in theory, um, again, since its inception, this would be a venue, some meeting for them to share information. Like bottom line, just knowledge sharing, what's working in your jurisdiction, what issues have you had to resolve, what's coming up. And if you look at the agenda of some of these, which are easily searchable, there are some, you know topics for discussion that, that are you know coming up so it's not just um uh, a boondoggle or or a reason to just kind of hang out and you know eat dinner with with a bunch of guys from different states uh, so the intent is there the, the actual intent is there and still remains there in 2023 to be a forum in which ideas are shared communicated networking but but then your question, the big question becomes after that is, does it get disseminated? Right? Does it go downstream after everyone parts? Then what? Yeah, no, you're spot on. And I think, and again, it wasn't a rhetorical question. None of the 
many jurisdictions that I'm a member of, did I ever hear, see an email or see something in Grandview saying, hey, here's what I learned at the Conference of Grandmasters. Nothing, you know? Um, so- Well, I think it's it's very much not in vogue in any kind of way to suggest for any reason that a solution or a program for a, from a foreign jurisdiction was born other than in your own head. So, I mean, it's just yeah. no, nobody can ever say, oh, I grabbed this really cool thing that's happening over an XYZ world and we should try that here. Um, I mean, can we just go through this agenda, this 2022 agenda? Like starting yeah. on, on, on Friday, the 17th, right? It's all tours of various estates. We're going to count the, the things that are probably valuable here. Um, National Masonic Foundation for Children. Okay, so that, that's probably, that, that fits in the mission. A 2022 planning committee, not sure what that is. A nominating committee, cocktail reception, kickoff dinner, conference registration. No. So the nominating committee, I can, I actually read it in a couple of proceedings. So Wait that's when they have, they nominate new members to the conference of grandmasters. So, um, you know, uh, next year's, you know, uh, a deputy grandmaster from a jurisdiction, he could be like a guest there and then they actually make him a member and it's a membership. Like you're on, you're on the, you're in this organization for, I think it's at a period of seven years. Um, but yep. if grandmasters in the chat, feel free to chime in. So you got this, what else you have? Um, Worship Masana, service. Uh, hey, right. No greater uh, important undertaking. That's important. Yep. Um, Conference of Grandmasters general session. I'm sure that's cool. The Scottish Rite SMJ board meeting. I'm sure that's important. MSA. People could say what they want. I think the MSA is super valuable. I wish they controlled more things, but. That's just me. Um, recognition. Lots of lunches. You skipped all the lunches. Yeah, I'm not mentioning anything that's garbage here. <laughs> um, lunch, lunch, lunch. Civi Ooh, the Masonic Civility Community or Committee. That sounds cool. Um, Conference of Grandmaster General Session. The Time and Place Committee, that's interesting. The Masonic Renewal Committee, that's um, fairly a newer committee, a very important work there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Masonic Communities and Service Association, uh, the cocktail reception, don't worry about that. Um, cocktails. Good grief, where's the work? Yeah, I'm still looking. Um, okay, I'm assuming, I'm assuming a lot of these things like these general sessions are general are session the, are the workings. Yeah. That, are the that's where they had the committee groups. reports and things like that. It yeah. looks like they got some cool breakouts too. Like um, on February. Uh, oh, that's the issue of the, the report, but they have one that's called. It's not a membership problem. It's a leadership problem. Mm. They had one called revolutionary war general and brother Henry. Uh, oh, Hugh Mercer. So a general kind of thing there. And then the National Sojourners met and a farewell dinner. Um, I mean, it's it has to be it's got to be immensely valuable. And you have to have all this networking and these lunches and things because mm -hmm. dudes have to like, you know, zipper up and, and come together to create something awesome. And um, so I don't doubt it. Right. Like we go to these conferences and we do the same thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you got to break bread. You got to, yeah, got to do the the glad hand. It's it's kind of where everything really happens, right? I'm trying to find. I want to bring up one that I saw was super duper interesting, and I'm kind of jelly. I didn't go, so maybe I'll I'll start running for grand secretary. But um, I think you can just go. <laughs> well, you can. Yeah, uh, you know, there are so again. You know, it, I was it was uh, it was in Virginia. You know, which was super close for me. But I think the next one is what Seattle or something like that, or year after or some other place. Um, so it, it does move around, but I did see, uh, we did get the agenda for this year for the conference of grand secretaries and pardon my slowness in sharing it. Um, let's see here. How's that look? 
That Small, is, skinny. Yeah. Make big. Hey, do zoom. Make big. Make big. Make where's zoom the, in. Where's the, the zoom, Google boy? The 100% in the upper left. Oh, yeah, there we go. Do the fits. Do fit. Boom. How's that? Mm-hmm. Okay. Do fit. So, some awesome things. Oh, okay. Jesus, relax. F. It's uh, the same size. Okay. Stop yelling at me. So, uh, some definitely interesting things here that I saw. Uh, and it's a much smaller sub conference, right? Um, but they had their tours and all this stuff. Cornerstone ceremony, best four hours of my life. Um, cocktails, uh, an opening session, new grand secretaries, the memorials committee, the audit committee, committee reports. Love it. Um, they had their keynote speaker, uh, brother Robert Marshall. Awesome friend of the show. I heard it was a fantastic um, presentation. Survey they usually questions. are. They are. They are. Yeah. Um, I am dying to know what they actually surveyed Ooh. Um, and what were the results were. Yeah. No idea. And what um, the survey questions looked like. Absolutely. We know nothing, but I would love, I know John is. Are they statistically bias. significant? Indeed. Indeed. So group photos. Is there a survey bias? And Indeed. why, yes. There's always going to be a survey. I, <laughs> well, look at some of these topics. It's my that, follow-up, right? Yeah. You got to have the guy who writes the intelligent questions. You have to have somebody who is completely unrelated to compile the responses. Yeah. It has to be super disconnected and broke apart several different ways so that you can get any kind of real response. I mean, it's kind of like why I think the Northern Jurisdiction was – doing a good job when they did their initial survey, not the other survey that was like changing all the time. Um, but their initial survey that they ran or the, the, the paid one that they used yep. because they chose an outside ad agency kind of to like look at things and, right. you know, right on. And then, so, and then they had discussion topics and these are awesome. I would love to know what was discussed here. Yeah. So the first one, so, transgender policies panel. That's something that the fraternity needs to figure out. I am so happy that there's at least a discussion happening among Grand Lodge officers on that. Well, hold up. It was on the schedule. It does not mean it was actually discussed. I'm just telling you. what. Was or it's on. ended. Or, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Or the discussion's over. But electronic yeah. use cards. Ooh. They talked about it. That's standardization of forms across jurisdictions. That's awesome. Um. You know, everybody using the same thing. I love it. Um, you know, and then they had more talks and more cocktails and more buffets and and all that stuff. So yeah, good things. But super interesting things. But again, if we did not download this agenda, none of us would know about that stuff. Right. Yeah, because yeah, that's not being there's no enforcement mechanism. Even if even if a grandmaster really wanted to like to then disseminate this, there's nothing stopping them. But again, where the discussion ends is in that room. Yeah, I think maybe what needs to start happening is these agendas need to get pulled and pushed to the membership so that at least the membership in general has an idea of what their grand master, um, you know, was a part of talking about or chose not to be a part of talked about or, um, you know, at the very least in terms of uh, transparency, you know, we as a grand jurisdiction, our per capita pays for all those expenses that they incur when they go to these events. Um, So we should know what's happening. And to be honest with you, I would say, you know, grab this, copy it and paste it in your grand lodge Facebook group and, and see what the brothers want. What were the results? Yeah. Let's or, talk. you know, or let's just talk about it. Right. Get the brothers talking about what was possibly talked about there. And are we going to find some arguments happening? Maybe. But the other thing that'll happen is the Grand Lodge will see what the constituency thinks about some of those things. And they may care. They may not. Likely. But, not, but yeah. <laughs> but there is hope that. You know, there are there are jurisdictions where, you know, the leadership is in tune with the larger sea changes of its constituent members. Well, to, yeah, I mean, that's that's a spot on point. And um, 
I actually went to research a question that somebody asked here. Let me find it from Drew. Uh, so Drew, the answer is I don't know, but I went through the last six years of roll calls and I did not see any Prince Hall affiliated grandmasters being called on the roll. So I'm guessing no. Um, yeah. That's that's difficult given uh, how spotty Prince Hall recognition still is, especially with those right. jurisdiction jurisdictions that only recognize one or two. <clears throat> right. Um, it's not transitive, right? So yeah, and only a couple of jurisdictions have universal recognition mm -hmm. with Prince Hall. Yeah. So yeah, great question though. But good, yeah, good point. Let me see here. I'm just scrolling through questions. Oh. Actually, oh, I, I, you started to inhale like you had an awesome point, but uh, um, but it's probably actually mentioned this before. So we were talking about what are the things we don't know. So, you know, that not just a man of Mason campaign. Yeah, it was presented um, and I actually did go through those proceedings. It was presented uh, to the conference of grandmasters and they did get buy in from from Grand Lodges and stuff like that. But that was a paid thing. You know, it wasn't just, hey, this is for all y'all. It's free. No, it was a marketing campaign and Grand Lodges yeah. had purchased it in order to, um, you know, benefit from it and use it and utilize it. Like I know our jurisdiction does. And it's actually kind of cool. They go to that website and I get an email two days later that someone's mm -hmm. interested and they live in my area. So super cool. But, um, you know, I think what we were referring to was what are the decisions that are made? What are the discussions that are going on? And are those being disseminated to us? And the answer is no, they're not. You know, so unless we have another pandemic and they go on Zoom and then we can hear those answers for ourselves a couple of years later. But. Well, and, and the question is, are are there actually decisions being made? And I would say in a large part, no. Right. You know, with each True. jurisdiction being sovereign, you know, it's a good time for a Grand Lodge officer to get, again, that, that head out of province view of the larger trends in masonry. But then it's up to the individual Grand Master to do something or anything about it, if at all. So this is like the Midwest Conference on Masonic Education. It's the only regional Masonic Education Conference that, you know, Grand Lodges buy into where there's a board and somebody has a vote or a number of votes to, that they can cast within this thing. And really what happens at the Midwest Conference is very similar to what happens uh, there's a Midwest Conference of Grand Masters as well. So like, you know, it's a regional and then larger and larger and larger. Um, unfortunately, we don't have a, uh, you know, conf a, a grand conference for Masonic education. Although I wouldn't be surprised if the Midwest Conference soon drops the Midwest Ooh. portion of that. Uh, I will say that what happens is our state educators, the state level guy gets in front of everybody in the past. Right. And they would say, this is what we did this year. This is what we did this year. And they would all get up and present their reports. And then we'd have a breakout. And then if somebody said something cool, like, boom, you go to that person, you talk to them and talk about uh, what they do. And you kind of schmooze and steal and, 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 and take ideas and all these things. And it was really cool. And I think the, the conference of grandmasters really kind of does some of that stuff. Very similar. Um, they're not making decisions. They're hearing you're listening, hopefully, seeing what works, compiling ideas for what, you know, could possibly be, uh, you know, beneficial for their grand jurisdiction. You, you touched on something interesting and and, you know, this is not a rhetorical question. Would love would love to hear your thoughts on it. But grand jurist, you know, grand bodies are just as transitory as the local lodges, right? So you've got a grandmaster who attended this year, right? He went, he heard some stuff. It was awesome. Phenomenal. I jot some notes down three years later, he's gone Puff. Right? and yep. everything, everything that he absorbed and, and sucked in and took and, and brought back to his jurisdiction has disappeared. So like, what's the long game for a conference like this? Ooh. You know, what's the short term? What's the long term? Well, we know there's only very few jurisdictions that have that strategic plan, right? A five-year plan or seven-year plan or a 10-year plan. That's true. You know, the updates that I have been seeing from um, my Grand Lodge leadership is within our Facebook group or whatever, um, I think uh, uh, Right Worshipful Brother Angelo Desario, he's, um, you know, he's in Grand Line, so he'll be 
if all goes according to plan, election, blah, 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 he'll be grandmaster in a few, I don't know, five, 10, something like that years. He was there, you know? And so I think it, it behooves our grandmasters to not only go to these things, but like in a kind of weird way, the best thing to do would be for a grandmaster to take his entire line with him and say, you guys pay attention, right? I'm on the way out. Like I've been coming to this grandmasters conference for X number of years. You know, like if you're in Illinois, you got to go through several years before you get to the top because we have two year lines. Um, so it takes a while, but yeah, like you have to build that continuity because without it, it's trash. So what's the relevance? What's the relevance now in 2023 when everything is can be done via an email or a Zoom meeting? Right? Well, I um, think there's I think there's a bunch of relevance. You know, there's something to be said for meeting in a large group face to face. You know, I'm all about Zoom Masonic education, right? But when it comes to uh, the exchange of ideas, I think it's very difficult to do that with a group of 50 to 90, you know, voting members over a Zoom, yeah. right? So uh, I'll give you that because um, if nothing else, it's a forcing function. Hey, give you want to show up for that? The, you want to show the show up for the nice fancy picture, right? Where you get to be in that the big class photo um, while you're here, you know we're going to discuss some things. And as you know, there's a lot more to body language. That's more than what you see here on the screen, right? Uh, right. You can see people shuffling, coughing, ignoring, looking around. <laughs> no, no, no lower Joe, no lower. Um, Whether or not they're wearing <laughs> pants. Right. Correct. You don't have uh, to wonder. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so there is something to be said about the forcing function of bringing them there so that, I mean, anything that shows up on like Chris Hodap's blog, right. That happens during the year. <laughs> and they're going to, they're going to be there and it's going to be this awkward. We know what you did. <laughs> That's <laughs> right? a great idea. They should, you know what they should during their general session, they should literally open up his blog and just go through the year in review. It's like, what Joe? did you all do this year? Is yeah. this you, Joe? Is Wisconsin. This... <laughs> what's going on there? Virginia, you know what happened there? You know, like why not do that? Throw it on. I tried. Day. I tried this this one time uh, <laughs> a few years back. I, I went to my first. Grand Lodge sessions, and I decided that it was a great idea to kind of like live tweet everything that happened into our Grand Lodge Facebook uh, group. Why? Because there's a lot of people that can't go. Well. Fast, like, why did I think about doing this? Because how many times I'm look, I'm looking at probably Joe and Jason here. How many times y'all like hop on midday for the Apple keynote when the new thing's coming out, and you're getting like live updates from some correspondent at CNET who's like typing out, yeah, me too. So you mean Google I/O? <laughs> sure, yeah, whatever, right? Like we all do this, and so like we get these cool updates. There's there's definitely some like hipster reporter who's there who's like sitting down they're dropping confetti you know they're doing all the things we need somebody to do this at the conference of grand masters right and who better conference than grand masters i'm just saying. grand lodge proceedings yes district leadership classes all of those all of the above should be live stream tweeted blogged you name it for it. records purposes right mm -hmm. and for just larger dissemination right some people have a million kids and can't get out of the house as easy as they'd like and so i want to know what's going on other way, Joe. I'm really I'm that way. <laughs> that so you set up. Anyway. So okay, so we got relevance covered as far as an in-person thing, but elephant in the room, accountability. Right? Is it still relevant if we're not holding any sort of follow-on actions accountable to come out of this? I think that's a lot of masonry though. <laughs> like you're not wrong yeah and that's and that's not you know being snarky it's just there's masonry is inherently set up where it's aspirational and we speak a lot in platitudes uh, but if you know we we stray or never actually reach that sublime height 
you know, who's who's there to actually hold you accountable? Well, outside uh, of something egregious like a Masonic trial or something like that. Well, no, I mean, you, you, you touch on a really good point where I don't think the purpose of a conference like that is uh, has an accountability aspect. Right. Because right. each jurisdiction is sovereign. So Florida doesn't care what Ohio has to say or their opinions right. on it and so on and so forth. Right. So it's it's you know what you were talking about before, Jason, with that face to face collaboration. I see a lot more benefit out of that than actual accountability like and and it's always at least what i've seen or if you read chris hodap or you know you're on facebook if a grand jurisdiction does something it usually comes out of the side of the conversation right it's not just blasted and posted everywhere and stuff it's like oh this these people stopped recognizing these people and here's why and it's not this big to do you know so again i don't see where they where they hold themselves accountable to one another at a conference like this What happens in 12 years when the fraternity is now a tenth of its size? Does this type of forum have more relevance as Grand Lodges are struggling with administration? It depends. Is that your, your great consultant answer, right? It, so... Okay, bye. Um, <laughs> it fully depends on how intact the Grand Lodge system still is. Mm -hmm. um, I think they're, they're going to hold on. They're going to hold on for dear life. Sure, as the boat's sinking. Yes. Um, so I think I think it will almost be more relevant as groups become smaller and more federated, like. You're going to have smaller pockets of brothers and masons. Um, thanks, John. Um, you know, probably mostly in urban areas, um, just because that's a greater concentration of, of people. And it will be, I think, more important um, to get leaders, leaders together. I, you said something I found really interesting, and, and maybe I'm looking at it differently, but what I've seen in, in my short time in masonry is that people will actually go to travel to get the masonry that they want, right? It's no longer a, a localized thing anymore, sure. right? So, you you know, sure. great point about, yeah, in more populated centers, absolutely. I think that's where concentrations will be. But you will have guys that will drive three hours to go to sure. law, you know, if it's worth it the experience and it has the value that it can provide. Um, so, you know, the days of localized masonry, it's like, I have to go to the lodge that is, is next door to my house are gone, you know, and we see it all the time, you know? Well, um, and I, and I do think those lodges will die in the next 18 years because yeah. of that. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so I see, I see those local rural, rural lodges as the ones that will struggle the most. And it doesn't even have to be rural. It could be a big city lodge that doesn't do anything, you know, that sure, you right. know, mm -hmm. same old stodgy stuff, you know, same green beans, um, nothing changes, you know, and those lodges will die. And I think the system is designed to, ooh, fantastic, to, to do that. Scott asks a great question here. Um, will this change with a generational shift in leadership at the Grand Lodge level? No. Yeah, I don't think so either. Nope. And the reason why is because I have talked to brothers, let's just say in Southern states where there are certain derogatory terms still used that are not printed in cipher, but they say in cipher, like it's a part of it, even though it's not official. And so if it sounds like I'm being cryptic, I am, but like the point being is they pass on the bad habits they continue to pass on the idea of things like not only bad habits, yeah. but the ideas of good old boys clubs yeah, uh, and, and all of these things, which you really got to have. You, you get these diamond in the rough every once in a while who comes along, who does see things a different way, right. um, who is, pardon me for saying this, but who is educated enough to hold the position and we're being silly. And, and untruthful <clears throat> if we say there are men 
countless men who have been elected to countless various leadership positions within masonry that are not smart men. And that's a mistake. And so these younger leaders that we have, that we find guys like Sean Bradshaw. Wow. Ray mm-hmm. Dunn. Wow. You know, we got guys all over the place who are doing some pretty rad stuff. Um, but I don't. Yeah. And it's, it's not that, but I think you're brought up a good point. So even if it's not the good old boys network, like right now we have the progressive line of the grand lodge. So at best you're getting new blood seven years from now. Right. Or um, 10 or 12 in some places. Right. Yeah. Because everybody keeps <laughs> picking. What is the folks at the bottom? Yeah. Yeah. I'm just like, what is the length of time that you can spend somebody to spoil them and turn them into you? Seven years. It's a long okay, game. That's it. It's a long that's game. That's it. So I've got this new guy who's rip roaring to go and is, well, you know, we need seven years to tame this fella. And then pretty soon by the time he's ready to go, you know, he's a curmudgeon too. Um, <laughs> is that, the, it's, is that funny, it's true, right? It's, it's funny. How many people do all of us know that, you know, have got into those, those positions of leadership and 10 years later, you're like, what happened to you, man? You were cool and you know, you got it. And you know, now you're a pencil pusher, you know, like you sold out, man. Yeah. You sold out. Right. All right. So then, uh, it really comes down to really the last aspect, which is, you know, what could it be? Like, what, what's the hope of how could it be reformed? Or what would you do di- differently if, it, if the Conference of Grand Masters of North America, as it exists today, didn't exist, hasn't been around, and you wanted some sort of forum to do this, how would it look, how would it look differently? And we can actually turn that into the final question. So I'll let you think about that while I rephrase it, right? So it's either... Um, how what what could the future of this forum look like or if it didn't exist at all how would you reinvent it and i'm going to start with joe tonight just so he gets ahead of rj wow thank you for giving me time to formulate an answer so you're welcome so um repeat the question again how, how could we reform it or if it didn't exist how would we implement it kind of thing yeah how, if you were to build it from scratch, what would it look like? Or how would you reform it going forward? So let me answer the second part first, because outside of looking at some agendas and reading some proceedings, we don't know, or I don't know exactly what happens there, right? But And we are making some informed and educated assumptions uh, by looking at some of these things or by watching the general session on YouTube and things like that. So, so we do know that. But I think that in an era of, shrinking masonry right where we're becoming much more compact than we have been ever in the past um i think it needs to turn into something that is actually relevant for the jurisdictions that get to that critical point where they where they're going to be living for the foreseeable future right you know i'm you know i i know i i joke about hashtag 2040 a lot and stuff like that do i think freemasonry is going to disappear Absolutely not. It's not going to go away. Is it going to look different than it does now? Absolutely. Right. Because, you know, the, the, the top is just way too heavy and, you know, the tiny little pillars that are holding it are just getting older and weaker and crumbling and they're not getting replaced by new pillars. So, um, you know, in terms of what needs to change from today, I don't know. Um, maybe less luncheons and maybe more discussion groups, um, you know, maybe actually, talk about things that are happening in your jurisdictions and bring that information back to your constituents, right? I would love a summary of all the talks that happened at the conference of grand secretaries and, you know, some Mm -hmm. of the breakout sessions that happened at the conference of grand masters. I would love to know what was happening because probably for 49 years, I'm not going to know or have the ability to attend one again until it comes back to Virginia. Right. Right. So yeah, I think those are, those are a couple of things that uh that i would like to see and maybe it'll happen organically on its own because they have no choice all right thanks jason so for me i think um joe hit the nail on the head with transparency i think i'd love to see more transparency about what the major topics of conversation across the the various grand jurisdictions are um (coughs) 
<laughs> excuse me. And um, I do think, you know, it would be awesome to have something standardized, like there's a grandmaster's report on, you know, his perspective on the the conference of grandmasters like i i like the idea of sharing that information with the brethren to remind them hey like there's more than just the lodge down the street fair enough all right uh let's head over to rj well um, yeah, transparency, at least just in terms of what is happening. Um, I would like to see the conversations that are going to be talked about. I don't care if it says like working session, that means nothing to me. I would like to see like, what are y'all going to talk about? Um, and how does that relate? You know, maybe not even how that relates to me as a Illinois Mason or Massachusetts Mason or whatever, um, just knowing what they're going to talk about. And um, I think having like in general, not only these items up for people to look at, but when grandmasters have like fireside chats or like grand lodge town halls and they go around to various lodges and, and gatherings, members could have the opportunity to ask about those kinds of uh, those kinds of things. And I think that's super important. Um, I love the idea of uh, broadcasting a lot of this. And, and I know a lot of people say, well, listen, it's masonry, it's tiled, yada, yada, yada. But the thing is, is that not a lot of it is, is really tiled, right? Because they do, they did, they did a whole conference on Zoom a couple of years, or last year, or whatever. And so we all have attended at least one of these. If, right. you, if you decided to watch it, I mean, I did. Um, I watched every, every part of it. Sorry about my dog. Um, but I think that is like a start. Um, not only that, but but I think also uh, Sun Card said each Grandmaster would have to leave the conference with a commit to try. I thought that was a really interesting comment because within that, you're looking at things like, hey, if there's a, a thing that we all agree that might work, can we agree to try it and then report back results? Um, so those kinds of things I think are really important. Sweet. Awesome. All right. Um, yeah. So if, either way, whether to, to fix it or to start all over again, uh, we definitely have talked about the value of, of having you know, folks meet in person uh, because of just that face-to-face -face interaction is, is key, especially for, you know, the country as large as ours where you want Alaska and Florida to actually be in the same room at the same time and, and share some ideas. So I'm all for collaboration, sharing ideas, right. And having that dialogue, uh, the more, the better. And, and I would just add more of the transparency aspect of it. Um, not that it's <clears throat> cloak and dagger or anything, but just to, to share, right. To, to share more ideas, right. This is, there's a lot of our dues that are invested in this conference. Let's, let's put it pretty, pretty frankly, uh, of the, the travel that goes there and the time it takes to set up. It's not free. And it's, it's, it is time that, uh, our representative, our grandmaster and, and, uh, the grand secretaries are investing in masonry. And so, you know, as a, as a taxpayer, I want to know what my representatives are doing with my taxes. So, uh, that's, that's just the way I, I view it, that I think it could be, it could be more than it is. It's not that it's, bad as is it's just that it could be so much more and especially as we've alluded to uh with declining numbers you know in the next uh less than than two decades it's going to need some restructuring if it if it means to continue to grow its purpose in uh the um, sustainability of our fraternity and so with that this has been awesome love the conversation love the new format love seeing some of the the chats pop up live. So thanks for interacting every week. Love you guys. And uh, we'll see you next week. Keep searching for more light. Have a good night.